Hi, and welcome to Coding with Dennis. I'm Dennis. In this video here, we'll take a look at some of the basic functionality of PyTorch. So let's uh, go ahead and jump right into it. So I prepared this notebook here to give a quick introduction to some of the functionality of PyTorch. And the link to the notebook you'll be able to find in the description of the video. So one of the fundamental building blocks of PyTorch is tensors. So PyTorch tensor is conceptually uh, the same as a NumPy array. So any computation as such that you can perform with NumPy, you can also um, perform with PyTorch tensors. The only difference is that uh, PyTorch over NumPy can then make use of the GPU to accelerate uh, numerical computations. So the first thing you'll do when working with PyTorch is, uh, beside installing the PyTorch library, then importing it. And then you can check if you have a, a GPU available by saying Torch the CUDA is available. I do not, so I'm just currently running on my CPU. And you can have this little uh, if else sentence here to automatically um, check if you should be using uh, your GPU or CPU device. So as Torch CUDA is available is false, in our case we'll be using our CPU. Then we create a random matrix instead of NP, which you'll be using with NumPy here, you just use torch random and the um, functionality here is the same. The only difference now is that you can set that device where it should place this, um, this matrix here. So you could place the matrix on, uh, on your GPU memory instead of um, on your machine. Now we just create a two by three matrix we can do uh, simple um, simple operations like adding one to every entry in the matrix uh, we can also do matrix multiplication by torch.matmul so as this is two by three we have to transpose one of the entries um, so in this case here uh, to get a two by two matrix we can also use the synthetic sugar uh, multiplication just as known from uh, numpy this will give the same result, or we can do element-wise multiplication by just using the multiply operator. So this here would just element-wise multiply the original, what we have up here, 0 0.56 times 0 0.56. Okay, so as such, um, PyTorch, NumPy, if you already know NumPy, then it doesn't take too much time to get used to PyTorch, at least some of the basic operations here you can do. So in PyTorch, um, <clears throat> one of the things it's very known for is that you can do um, automatic backward propagation. So implementing this backward propagation in a huge network can very quickly become really complex. Um, so we need, or we want some kind of way to automatically dif uh, differentiate our full computational graph. And this is done by a module called Autograd in PyTorch. So the only thing we need to do in PyTorch is just specify the forward pass. So the pass from our input to our output of the network. And this will then create a computational graph. Um, so I also have a basic introduction video to deep learning. I'll also link that one in the description where I go over a computational graph and how to do backward propagation. Um, and in order to be able to do uh, backward propagation, so to compute the gra uh, gradients of our, our variables in our network, we just need to set this require gradient equal true when constructing a tensor. So let's just set two variables here that we have W and B. So these are two um, tensors um, where we'll be able to compute their gradient. Okay, so far, so good. Let's now just have an input X and an output. Uh, let's not look, don't, don't uh, look too much like at the exact values now. And these, um, these tensors here will not set require gradient equal true, so we'll not be computing their gradients. We'll not be able to in, in this computational graph. 
So now we can say that we compute the output, um, so maybe just as linear regression, so w times x plus b, then we get the prediction of y. And then we can look at, okay, so this is the prediction, um, and we obviously have here, this is what it should be, and now we just print, okay, so the true label is 1, the predicted is 2. Now we can then uh, compute the loss. So here we just use the mean squared error loss. So minus the predicted, minus the uh, what it should have been, um, and powered by 2. So then we compute the loss. And what we now do is, having this loss, so the output of our network, we just call loss dot backward, and after doing so, our gradients of these variables, they are available in the variable dot grad. So here is the gradient computation of the tensor B, and here of the tensor W. After computing these gradients, what we should remember is setting the gradient to zero. So what we're usually doing in an optimization step is computing the gradient, taking a step in the direction of the gradient or in the negative direction of the gradient, and then iterating, computing the gradients again. But before recomputing the gradients, we have to first zero these. So this here was the very, very some very, very basic um, operations that you can do with PyTorch. So the very basic operation of of uh, computing the gradients and how to specify which variables you want to compute the gradients of. Obviously, the network here is quite simplistic. So let's have a look at how we can make this network slightly larger. And for that, we'll be using the module um, in PyTorch called NN. So for large neural networks, this autograd directly working with that could be a bit too low level. Um, so in here, we can make use of the NN package to define modules with, which are roughly equivalent to neural network layers. Let's first define some data. In this case here, our x variable will say that we have the dimensionality of our data is 1000, so each of our feature inputs is 1000 dimensions. And then we say that we have 64 um, data points. And on the output, we have 100, uh, oh, we have 10 entries on the output. So we have 10 different classes uh, that we want to classify our data in. And classify or use regression. So in fact, in this case, case here, we'll just be setting up a small regression example. And then we have 100 hidden um, units in our hidden layer. So now we just define our data. Um, so to have this 64 times 100 data matrix with our input, and on the output, then we have 64 times 10. Uh, so the ground truth output. Now we'll be defining our model, and we can do that by using this torch nn and then sequential. And inside the sequential um, bracket here, what we're doing is just adding um, the, the this individual layers in the network. So here we just have a linear layer. It's just uh, fully connected um, with the inputs. So in the inputs, we have a thousand uh, dimensional feature input and we have a hidden layer of 100 dimensions. Afterward, we are putting this one, this through a, um, a ReLU activation function to add some nonlinearity into our, our network. And afterward, we have the output, where the output of this ReLU is then connected to a, finally, an output layer with 10 dimensions. So obviously the output of the ReLU is also the same dimension as what is put in. So um, what you just need to keep track on here is the dimensionality of the inputs and outputs that they are equivalent to each other. So now our model is defined. We can also, instead of manually defining our loss, um, Torch has a lot of different implemented um, loss functions. So in this case, we just stick with the mean squared error loss. 
And then we can find here if over our full batch of 64 entries, do we want to, uh, like what kind of reduction do we want to do? Do we want to just compute the mean and use that as the loss or the sum or uh, something else? So the default is just to use the mean. So let's just stick with that. Then we compute the output. So just the model, we input our data X into our model. And then we are just comparing here. What is the predicted output? It's just the first entry and what is the actual output? And then we see there is some difference. These two are definitely not the same, these two tenses. So what we're then doing is uh, now computing the loss from the output and the predicted output. And then we can backpropagate the loss through our computational graph. And now we have for each of the parameters in our network, we have access to this gradient, just as we saw in the first example. And then we can loop over all the parameters in the model and use uh, gradient descent here, just manually implement the gradient descent so far. We'll look in the next example, how we can make use of the gradient descent implemented by PyTorch or implemented in PyTorch. So here, the update of a parameter is just the learning rate, well, minus the learning rate times um, the gradient. Um, and then we have to zero all the gradients of the model. So if we do so, then we can compute the output again, compute the loss, which we now see decreases, backward, update all our weights, and then we can iterate over this here a few times and see that we are indeed uh, getting closer to um, our, or to learning um, the correct parameters to be able to, uh, to predict the output of, of this data. Okay, so that was kind of the second level of using PyTorch by specifying the model in this in this uh, sequential manner here. The next level is that you can also define the module by using this nn.module. So, yeah, by having a subclass of nn.module, um, the only thing you need to do is just define the forward pass. And also in the constructor, we need to call the constructor of um, of the of the class module here also. This here is rather important, otherwise it will just throw an error. Then we can define our layers. So we have a linear layer, uh, a linear layer more. Just like in the example above, uh, every, like this here will be exactly the same network. Then down here, we just define here that we have um, some ReLU activation and we are just inputting our data into the first linear uh, layer and then afterward putting it all through ReLU activation function and everything we put through the second, so the output layer. Um, and finally, this is what comes out of this forward pass. Okay, so let's execute this cell. And now let's specify our data again. So this here is exactly the same as before just instantiating X and Y. We can make an instance of the, the two layer net class here that we just created. We specify the loss again as the mean squared error loss. And now instead of manually uh, specifying our optimizer, we're just specifying here that we use the torch optim dot stochastic gradient descent. We could also specify here to use the Atom Optimizer or any other optimizers um, implemented in PyTorch. And we're also specifying the learning rate here. So now the training is, well, we can predict the output. In the model, we put our data. Then we compute the loss. And we just uh, access the loss value here by loss.item. Then our optimizer, we're just zeroing the gradients there. We are doing a backward propagation, so computing the gradients now, 
um, from this forward pass. And then we are with our optimizer, we take a step. So we take a gradient step using our stochastic gradient ascent uh, optimizer here. And now we can then go up again, compute the output, compute the loss, um, update the uh, weight in our network, and iterate. And then we should see that the um, loss is decreasing. So obviously you would put this in a loop um, instead of, of having it done in such a dumb way as here. So this here is more just for, um, yeah, giving a, giving a very um, broad uh, introduction to how to use PyTorch. As I already mentioned, you can find the link to the notebook in the description. And with that, I hope you learned something and I hope to see you back in the channel for more coding tutorials. But until then, thank you for watching. <laughs>